time for bed. Aww, oh, we don't Five mind. more minutes. <laughs> I'm sorry, did I fucking stutter? Get to bed now. Your grandpa will read you a bedtime story. Hooray! Hooray! Beak Beak, do you maybe want to go read to your grandkids tonight? No. I just think that they'd really appreciate spending some time with their grandpa. No. What is, what is this? Have you been drinking? What is this? You want to know what this is? None of your goddamn business, my business is what it is. My business is my kids are going to be here. Listen, what, what, Katie. What are you, a man or a mouse? I'm a fucking toucan, Katie. I'm a fucking toucan and I always have been. What does mom say about Your mom doesn't care. You think your mom gives a shit? You think I give a shit what your mom thinks? Kids want to spend time with you. They need a good role model. Oh, and why do they need a good role model? What happened to their father? Oh, right. He's still back at the house with your maid robot, isn't he? God damn it, Dad. Get in there and read to the kids right now. <sighs> hey, kids. Are you all snug and settled in and ready for your bedtime story? Hey, grandchildren, are you all snug and settled in and ready for your bedtime story? Ah, oh, shit. Hooray! All right, let's just take a look at the old story shelf. Uh, let's see, uh, no, uh, nope, I oh, can't read that. Uh, nope. Ah, here we go. Backdoor Sluts 3. Now, this is where the trilogy really comes together. Oh, Grandpa, you read us that last week. Yeah, we've already read everything on the story shelf. Read us something new. Yeah, yeah come, come on. on. All right, okay, okay, calm down. Yeah, maybe there's something in the back here. Hmm. Hmm. Ass effect. Hmm. No, wait. This isn't pornography. Mass effect. Oh, well, you can just read us that one anyway, Grandpa. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I could probably ramble on about this for half an hour. Ah, uh, but Grandpa Bigby, didn't you already tell us the story of Mass Effect? No. No. With Mass Effect Legendary Edition coming out soon, you could experience Mass Effect in disgusting 8K with updated textures. But then I thought, no, you don't deserve it. So experience it here in glorious 720p with shitty face textures as it was intended. In the year 2007, an upstart young company named BioWare was about to burst onto the scene with its hottest new RPG title, Sonic Chronicles The Dark Brotherhood. There was just one problem. Bioware executives knew the game was going to be so successful and make so much money, they needed to offset the profit with a loss for tax purposes. They scraped together their worst team in the studio and told them to make a commercial failure. Unfortunately, the team assigned to it was so incompetent, they couldn't even do that right, and instead made one of the greatest video games of all time. Before we get into it, we need to create our character. You guys know I'm a bit of a conformist, so I just use the default face. For a name, we'll call him Shepard. That way it won't be weird when your love interest only calls you by your last name. That's what I call immersion. Mass Effect is a sci-fi game, so it has an incredibly in-depth and complicated backstory that is a paragraph long. I've seen wordier CVS receipts, let's spice this up. The backstory of Mass Effect. Once upon a time, there was a Prothean named Brian, and he built a lot of wonderful things for his family, especially his wife, Katie, and his three wonderful children. But then one day, Brian met a sexy black robot called a Reaper, and that Reaper just completely destroyed that family's life. Dad? Sorry, anyway, the Reapers came and wiped out all life in the galaxy exactly 49,999.99 years ago. Why is that not all anyone talks about all the time? People lost their shit about the Mayan calendar back in 2012. Anyway, the point is the Protheans built a bunch of stuff and then the Reapers wiped them out, but you're not supposed to know about that yet. Why are we using their stuff? For all we know, that's what did them in. Shepard is a human who's good at guns and his mom outranks him in the Navy. Shepard wanted to be a mailman when he grew up, but instead he accidentally joined the Space Marines because he refuses to read anything. The story begins with us on the Normandy with our pilot Joker, a guy who can't walk, and our boss, Captain Anderson. We're on a super secret mission to pick up a package from a human colony. Apparently they found an intact Prothean beacon and it has a message for us. To make sure we complete our delivery properly, the Galactic Council has sent a Turian mailman Spectre named Nihilus to watch us. Spectres are space cops who are above the law. Sounds like a fantastic idea and I'm sure there are no problems. The Turian says he's also there to evaluate Shepard on his mail delivering skills. But the colony is under attack. And now there's only one man who can save them. Jenkins, suit up. Don't worry, sir. I'm not gonna screw this up. Uh, Caden, suit up! Yes, Shepard, this is the first of many missions together. We're going to be working very closely for a long, long time. I'm gonna be all over you like racism on Twitter. I'm gonna be watching you like, haha, <laughs> later, loser! Woo! Never gonna die! The colony is being attacked by the Geth, a race of evil space robots. Jenkins immediately dies. He's actually the only named person we see killed by the Geth in the entire series. They are not very strong. We meet Ashley Williams, the only Marine wearing hot pink armor, so you know she must be an important video game character. 
I'm Commander Shepard Shepard. I'm Ash Williams, and I am very racist. Wait, what? Welcome aboard. The robots try to stop us with colonists they've turned into zombies, but they've forgotten two crucial things. I don't care about my fellow man, and this is exactly the reason shotguns were invented. This is also where you start to learn about the Paragon Renegade system. If you're a nice guy, everyone loves you. And if you're an asshole... Oh my god! You can't just go around whacking people in the head! Everyone still loves you. I suppose you're right. Nihilus gets killed by another Turian mailman named Saren. And that, kids, is why you always stay with the group. We reach the beacon. It looks dangerous. And Ashley decides she doesn't want to live in a world without Jenkins. We save her and a message gets beamed into Shepard's brain. <laughs> When we wake up, Anderson tells us that Saren got away, the beacon was destroyed, and everyone died. We only have one option, Anderson. What's that, Shepard? I'm telling on him. It's time to meet the Citadel Council. These are the people who pretend to run the universe, but are actually just kind of assholes. I've never noticed this before. They've all smeared white bird shit all over their faces. Except the Salarian Counselor. He just did a little bit, because of peer pressure. Council, Saren destroyed a human colony and killed everyone. <coughs> Qualified immunity. The council says they can't just convict a space cop based on hard evidence. Ambassador Udina plays the race card and we get thrown out of the council chambers. What a terrible diplomat. If this is really the best person we could send for this job, maybe Saren has a good reason for wanting to wipe out humanity. We meet Garrus, another Turian. Every other Turian we've met has been either incompetent or evil, so when Bioware wrote Garrus, they just said, make him awesome. Garrus leads us to a Krogan named Rex, the best character, who leads us to Tally, a hypochondriac, who apparently has a recording of Saren attacking the colony. What the fuck are those things? After the recording of Saren killing unarmed humans was posted on LiveLeak, public outrage forced the council to suspend him with pay, pending an internal investigation. Then the council find out he killed a Turian Spectre and they immediately order Shepard to hunt him down and execute him. They also make Shepard a Spectre, because the only way you can kill a space cop who is above the law is with another space cop who is above the law. Really, they just want to get Shepard off the Citadel. It's been non-stop explosions and murders ever since he arrived. Anderson gives me his ship, but I don't get promoted to captain. What utter bullshit. But before we can start up the old extrajudicial murder machine, we need to fill in the last teammate slot. Sarah's best friend Benezia has a daughter who's an expert on Protheans. Let's kidnap her. A lot of characters have badass introductions. When we meet Liara, she's floating in a bubble. Pathetic. Laser! Four nameless characters try to stop us, but I have a shotgun, so it's almost like they never existed. Shepard, I can read your brain. Let me see your vision. What do you make of it, Liara? What? The heck was that? Travel to Pharos. A bunch of colonists have decided to squat over some ancient ruins because they like to take enormous gambles with the integrity of their critical infrastructure. You can spend time and get to know the colonists and help solve their problems. Or you can get your awesome new car. A lot of people complained about this car just because it was terrible. And sometimes you would drive off the bridge and die and get sent back to your last autosave three missions ago. Yeah, those people can go to hell. The car is the best part of the game and I hope Bioware never removes it. A stock evil sci-fi corporation is trying to research a mind-controlling plant. Time to put an end to this hippie shit. This guy dies of natural causes and we go to save the colonists from being enslaved to a plant. The plant sends salad fodder to attack you, but again, Shepard has a shotgun, it solves every problem. When the Reapers wiped out all life in the galaxy, they forgot to take out this plant because they didn't think salad was people. Completely understandable. Plant offers to give us the Prothean Cipher, which we need to understand the vision. But Shepard is a vegan, so he murders it. <laughs> Luckily, this woman shows up and gives us the cipher. That was easy. What's more sci-fi than an incompetent evil corporation? A whole planet dedicated to incompetent evil corporations. Let me ask you, Shepard. Is a Solarian not entitled to the mucus secretions of his own brow? No, says the Asari on Thessia. It belongs to the goddess. No, says the Turian on Palavin. It belongs to defense contractors. No, says the Hanar on Hanar. It belongs to action movie producers. But I created something different. I created... Noveria! They try to take Shepard's shotgun. We find out Benezia was here. And we have Liara with us, so we have emotional leverage. We need to find her. The Solarian Overseer won't let us leave because he's the biggest dick in the universe. And my shotgun is completely ineffective. Shepard is so upset he runs around the facility and shoots everyone. We left a lot of bodies after that, and the Solarian Overseer still isn't letting us leave. Let's frame him. Now that we've created a power vacuum, we can leave to chase Liara's mother. Don't go out there, your Tauntaun will freeze before you reach the first marker. Then I'll see you in hell, because my car has a heater. One of the evil sci-fi corporations is researching the Rachni, a race of alien crawfish. You could help the employees by getting medicine and helping them with their problems. I say getting them off this mountain as fast as possible will help solve their problems. So Shepard nukes the lab with all the crawfish and goes to kill Liara's mom. 
Commander Shepard Shepard, Saren's ship has mind control powers. We don't have much time. To stop him, you'll need to find the Mew Relay. Here it is. Wow, that's it? Yes, now if you don't mind, I'll be on my- Revenge for New Eden! It was too late for her, Liara. No, it wasn't. That's just gas escaping. Then the Rachni Queen asked us to release her. Last time the Rachni were free, they nearly wiped out the whole universe. I have a good feeling about this. Hey guys, so we checked out all three of our leads and now we're out of new maps to explore, so we're just gonna come back to the Citadel now. No, I mean, uh, oh wait, Shepard. Um, you haven't checked out, uh, Vermeer yet. Well, why the fuck would I want to do that? Oh, well, you could drive your car more. You son of a bitch. I'm in. On Vermeer, you once again prove the car is superior in ankle deep water. Have you ever tried to drive on wet sand? Fucking impossible. This thing glides around like a ballerina. A drunk two ton ballerina with a six inch gun. Saren is trying to breed an army of Krogan, so we have to blow up this vacation destination with a nuke. I don't know how someone got to this planet and thought, you know what would work really well on this oceanfront property? An illegal genetic research facility. Saren has bred his Krogan army by curing the genophage, a disease created by the salamander-looking motherfuckers to stop the dinosaur-looking motherfuckers from having giant sea turtle spawns. Rex is upset that we have to wipe out the genophage cure, but if Saren did it once, we can do it again, so I don't know what he's complaining about. And if you're a big enough asshole, he agrees with you. The Salarian captain wants to create a frontal diversion while Shepard penetrates the rear with his shadow team. And that's when we find the big twist. Saren and Shepard are the same person. Also, Saren is being mind controlled by his ship. But we already knew that, so it's not a twist. Sovereign says, I am beyond your comprehension. I could never explain myself to you. But it's a Bioware game, so that's not gonna stop him from trying. Okay, hundreds of thousands of years ago, an ancient race of space crabs who lived underwater and therefore never discovered fire created the Reapers. So we decided to keep wiping out civilization until somebody invented tacos. Now that you have, it's time to wipe out your cycle. Caden stays behind to set up the nuke, and Shepard is to choose between saving Ashley or Caden. It's a very difficult decision, so we'll take our time with it. Let's make a pros and cons list. Ha, <laughs> I'm just joking. If you choose Ashley, go help her in the Solarian team. If you choose Caden, uh, nobody knows. Saren shows up on his surfboard after a day at the beach, so he's pretty chill. Commander Shepard Shepard, join me, and together we can be enslaved to a toaster. No, Saren, join me, and we can go for a drive on the beach in my car. No, Shepard, join me. Saren, can't you see that Sovereign is evil? And I will stop you. From my point of view, the council is evil. What? Debate me, bro. Hey look, Caden is still alive. If we hurry, we can save him. The Ara reads the vision again. It's a message. They knew their empire was doomed, and they wanted us to clear their browser history on Ilos. We go back to the Citadel to warn the Council about the impending space robot attack. To reward us for all the good work we did, they ground us. This is the part right before the third act where the main character feels completely demoralized. But then our mentor comes out and delivers a speech that completely changes our outlook on life. I'm gonna go beat up a nerd. <clears throat> Damn it, he's right. We get to Ilos, but there's nowhere to land. Joker's like, I'm gonna drop the car from space, so they do that and it's fine. It's an indestructible vehicle. Then I try to punch through this glowing wall for 30 minutes before I realize I have to get out of the car. Then we meet a Prothean computer. Hello, I'm a Prothean computer. Now I'm going to explain the whole game to you now. Oh great, now this motherfucker's gonna tell me his life story. Sovereign is going back to the Citadel to try to open a portal to dark space where a giant reaper army is. Wait, why did we come here then? We should have just listened to the council and stayed there. And there's only one machine that can get us there in time. Wait, wait, before you leave, please delete my browser history. But it turns out there was a mass relay just sitting in the middle of the Citadel this whole time. So we drive right through it. We crash the cart. Now! Saren, you motherfucker. You destroy my mail, you total my car, you try to genocide the galaxy, and now I'm going to kill you. Ha 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 ha. That's what you think, Shepard Shepard. What the hell was that? Sovereign takes control of Saren, turning him into the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Joker comes in and blasts the shit out of him. Wow, this was extremely easy. I think we probably could have taken the Reapers if they had come through. The Council thanks us for saving them from the Reapers. But they'll have forgotten everything about that in... Actually, before we move on, I want to mention the absolute scandal that surrounded Mass Effect when it came out. Apparently, someone saw their kid playing this game out of the corner of their eye, saw Shepard making out with another character, and had a full-on moral guardian panic attack. What? 
What the fuck? They had this whole segment. They put up this graphic for the lower third. They found some video game expert. Jeff Keighley is a game expert with Spike TV. Yes, that was a respectable job back in 2007. And then they brought in this poor woman who had never so much as seen a video game before. Probably wasn't even on Kippo. And here's how they're seeing women. They're seeing them as these as these objects of desire, as these, you know, hot bodies. I mean, they don't, they don't show women as being valued for anything other than their sexuality. And it's a man in this game deciding Hi. how many women he wants to be with. Cooper, have you ever played Mass Effect? No. Apparently this was like a big deal at the time, which I just found kind of hilarious. It's just not good, and I'm definitely not going to let uh, Mass Effect in my house. But I want to know, would Shepard cold cock this reporter too? Who can argue, possibly, that, uh, you know, Luke Skywalker meets Debbie Does Dallas is a good thing? I've had enough of your snide insinuations. Nowadays, we don't even care about this stuff. We read that shit as bedtime stories because it's total Cyberpunk 2077 future. I really don't know what happened. No one was upset when Cyberpunk had fully animated gratuitous sex scenes. Heck, people were upset they weren't more gratuitous. Contemporary video game controversies are more likely to center either around unethical overworking of staff or publishers running barely disguised casinos designed to trick children into gambling with their parents' money. And speaking of unethical video game publishers, Segway. The pitch meeting for Mass Effect 2 went something like this. You know that evil rich corporation Cerberus that was barely even in the game at all and pretty much just a lame side quest Shepard had to stop from doing evil things? Uh, yeah. Make them the good guys. Many people consider Mass Effect 2 to be the best game in the series, and it knows it and is a huge diva about it. Terrible online connectivity that you need if you want to play the whole game. But you also had to buy the DLC with Bioware points. What the fuck are Bioware points? And then sometimes it'll just stutter and crap, 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 crap. Shepard's just hanging out, having a relaxing space day, just chilling out, maxing, relaxing all cool. When a couple of guys, who are up to no good, attack the Normandy with a giant laser. Earlier, Joker took down a Reaper. Today, he got his ass kicked taking pot shots from a bunch of bug people. Shepard tries to save the ship and fails and dies, the end. But no, that was just a new beginning. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. We have the capability to make the world's first bionic shepherd better than he was, stronger, faster. When we wake up, everything is shot to crap. There's an angry woman yelling at us. Seems like a normal Saturday morning so far. Eventually we meet Jacob, uh, he's not important, and Wilson, the best character. There is a person, alive and working in the world today who made the decision to bind Vault to run to interact. I need to find this person, I need to confront them, I need closure. Miranda kills Wilson, my favorite character. Miranda said Wilson sold them out, but that makes no sense. He sold us out to a species that wants to kill all humans, which presumably included him. That would be like a passenger selling out the Titanic to the iceberg. But before you get worried, Mass Effect 2 has more characters in the House of Representatives. So we'll forget about Wilson as fast as we forgot about the last guy who died in the tutorial level. Shepard, we recovered your body and brought you back to life. You pretty much disintegrated in the atmosphere of that planet, mate. So it wasn't cheap. It cost four billion didgeridoos. Here's the bill. Um, can I get that itemized? If you can't pay off your medical debt, you're gonna have to work it off. Mistake. I don't remember the lips moving like this. Did the animators decision. that worked on Andromeda Everybody see this and try to restore it like that Spanish grandma? Destroyed. Let me ask you, Shepard. Is a human not entitled to the sweat of his own brow? Nope, no, we're not doing this again. So now we are an indentured servant to Cerberus and the elusive man. A man with the douchiest name in the galaxy. In the last game, Cerberus was an evil side organization that was so lame, I forgot to mention them. In this one, they try to make you think they're the good guys, but I know they're the most evil people in the universe because they nerfed the shotgun. Human colonies are being abducted, and instead of spending four billion credits on mass surveillance or early warning systems, Cerberus brought back one shooty boy. We go to one of the abducted colonies and meet Tali Zora, the hypochondriac from the last game. She and her hypochondriac friends are trying to find another agoraphobic hypochondriac who was at the colony when it was abducted. And this motherfucker was so afraid of the outside, he locked himself inside the security room. I guess his agoraphobia was completely founded. Luckily for us, he recorded the entire event. Thank God. Once again, we have a very reliable eyewitness to the colony attack that everyone will believe. The solution to the mystery is an alien race called the Collectors use tiny wasps to abduct the colonies. Case closed. Ocean Man tells us to stop the Collectors. Fucking how, mate? They are an entire species. I'm a guy with a nerfed shotgun. You need a good team. I've sent you the dossiers of three people you can hire at your own expense. I'm gonna need more than that, boy! Martin Sheen also gives us Joker, who also fell into a lot of medical debt because of his bonitis. Then Cerberus gives us a brand new ship, an exact recreation of the ship that just got its ass kicked, but this time with interior lighting that's actually up to code. 
The Normandy is also equipped with an artificial intelligence named Edie that watches you all the time and is very creepy. Last time, I played as the biggest dick in the universe and got wrecked. This time, I'm gonna play as the nicest guy in the world and hope no one throws me out the airlock. Then you go to the Citadel. In Mass Effect 1, it was a place where dozens of alien species came together to bitch about their problems and not solve a single fucking one of them. In Mass Effect 2, the Citadel has been transformed into an intergalactic airport terminal. So hear me out, you have hundreds of tiny shops that sell nothing. Thousands of people coming and going, no sense of time or place, ineffective security. Everything is an airport terminal now. The Citadel, American Airlines Hub, Ilium, Bougie Lufthansa Airport Terminal, Tachanka, Syrian Airport Terminal. Don't pretend you don't see it. The council is meeting with Councillor Anderson. Surprise, motherfucker! Oh, God, the council man, can Shepard. kiss my ass. Are you crazy? I fucking swear to God, you better walk you into this room right out. now. Shepard has every right to be here. Right I want yeah. reinstatement. Okay, you're upheld as a Deal. Now it's time to start putting the team together. Crazy old Doc Morton is hanging out on Omega, trying to cure a disease that's killing everyone off except the humans and Vorcha. Okay, Doctor, we can help you get the resources to develop- Have already developed cure. Oh, great. Then we can start trials and gathering data to prove its effectiveness. No, screw that. Just inject it straight into the air. So we do that. No questions asked. Wow, Morton, you play it fast and loose with the pharmaceuticals. If you can write prescriptions, you're in. Garrus is taking pot shots at mob bosses from his apartment. He's finally snapped. Help him avoid the consequences of his actions by killing all his enemies for him. Welcome aboard, you lunatic mass murderer, you. Next, we need to get a Krogan warlord named Okir to come help us. Oh, he's dead. I guess we'll just take this thing. Grunt is hanging out in a tank. Open the tank and he tries to kill you. I would like your unfocused homicidal energy. Welcome to the team. When you first meet a character in Mass Effect 2, they're like, I'm the most badass badass who ever asked badly, and then you actually take them to fight something and they crumple like wet paper. And no character embodies that ethos more than Jack. Jack is just chillin', in prison. Like, okay, I get the last few guys for recruits, but are we really gonna recruit this unstable mental patient to this super important suicide mission? Should I be worried that this is one of the only people we could get? Pick up Zaid and Kasumi. They're very important, but I will not mention them again. There are two challenges in Mass Effect 2. Defeat the Collectors and don't cheat on your girlfriend from Mass Effect 1. The Collectors are attacking Horizon Colony. Time to put this crack team into action. The Collector ship is parked on the planet, but the colony guns aren't firing at it. We need to calibrate the targeting. Luckily, Garrus is the fucking master of calibration. Yay, we did it. Half the colony's in there. This is a great victory. Ashley Williams is there. It's fine, don't worry about it. She's yelling at us for joining Cerberus, but it's not like I had a lot of career options when I was lying cold on a slab. Now we can recruit Thane Krios, Adrell, who's slowly getting assassinated by his own blood. Samara, she's some kind of cop who can kill anyone who gets in her way for some reason. I know, it's a pretty wacky alien concept. And pick up Tali, whose dad finally let her out to play. Is that everyone? No? Too bad. Shy Guy calls us. Is this going to be a fucking regular thing with you? Shepard, I've received word that a collector ship flooded its engines or stalled or something, and it's just sitting out there in space. Obviously, this is not a trap. We go to the collector ship, and it's extremely disturbing. The collectors covered their marble floors. These animals must be stopped. We also see they're abducting a lot of humans. Like, a lot, a lot. Like, at least 40. But then the collector ship remembers where they hit the key or something and suddenly starts up. The obvious trap was a trap? Who could have foreseen this? Shepard escapes and yells at Major Monogram for trying to get him killed before the suicide mission. He's like, yeah, but it worked. Like, barely, guy. So somehow, and don't ask me how, the gang decides they need a Reaper IFF to make it through the Omega B-12 relay. Jacob wants to get it right away because he wants to die. But I know better. Before you get the IFF, you have to do literally everything else in the game. Buy every upgrade, mine every planet for its precious palladium. And then, and only then, can you go fight the collectors. Or... You can risk it all, baby, if you have a really good plan. Oh no. Whoops. Uh-oh. Oh dear. Oh. Oh bother. I don't feel bad about that one. Okay, fine. We'll do the loyalty missions. Mass Effect 2 is about 20% cool sci-fi story and 75% group therapy session where you help your crew overcome their daddy issues so eventually they are willing to die for you in a suicide mission. The other 5% is getting as many store discounts as possible. I'm Commander Shepard. And this is my favorite store on the Citadel. So instead of hiring a bunch of Navy SEALs, or just mentally stable people, to fight this extremely demanding mission, the elusive guy decides to hire a bunch of criminals and weirdos who are all extremely hostile and want something from you. And it's almost always for you to help them deal with their daddy issues. I swear, it's daddy issues almost every time. Miranda asks you to help her deal with the mercenaries her father hired to rescue his other daughter. She kidnapped because he wanted his children to be successful and that stressed Miranda out, so she kidnapped a baby. Yeah, it's cool, don't worry about it. It. Jacob asks you to help find his deadbeat dad, who went out for smokes and never came back. Turns out, he was just leading a sex cult of marooned women for 10 years. Jesus! Isn't anyone's dad just like a workaholic or something? Ah, Thane is a workaholic, and he works so much that now his son wants
wants to have his old job. Cat's in the cradle, am I right? What was your job again, Thane? I was an assassin. We need to stop my son. <sighs> I'll see what I can do. Thane asks you to save his son from killing someone and turning out like him. Samara asks you to help kill her daughter before she kills somebody. Very different parenting styles. Tali asks you to go find her dad who is doing war crimes and gets war crimed right back, like a complete war crime scrub. Brett needs you to help him through puberty, so you take him to a Krogan sex education class where you have to fight a giant snake. Yeah, it's a metaphor, don't worry about it. We go to Tachanka to help Grunt. Apparently Rex is just in charge now. Rex has gone from being a bounty hunter to running an entire planet because he's awesome. I didn't know that it was that easy. Jack wants you to help her waste a huge amount of time and resources by taking a giant bomb to the middle of her elementary school on an abandoned planet and blowing it up because she was bullied. When you get there, you learn that she was actually the bully. Remember kids, if you spend your life thinking everyone is an asshole, it was probably you the whole time. Garrus wants you to help him shoot one guy. And that's why I love you, Garrus. Easy mission. On the way, we shoot like 200 guys. And then Shepard's like, no, this one goes too far. Don't do it, Garrus. You can't. Don't do it. You don't want to lose your soul. And then Garrus says, all right, Shepard, because Garrus is ride or die. Even if you kill all his friends in the third game, he's not even that mad. Morden wants you to help find one of his former students who was kidnapped by the Krogan. Turns out he was just on a vacation and turned off his phone location. He was also running illegal and unethical experiments on live subjects. Now that's what I call war crimes. He's trying to cure the genophage, but babies are loud, poop everywhere, and will die if you leave him alone for too long. Just let the Krogan get a cat, and then you can actually play the game. Shepard and the gang travel to a dead reaper to rip out some delicate components. The gang finds the science team there has already been turned into zombies from the last game. It's all very spooky, and my shotgun is useless now. All I have now is the M240 machine gun. We meet Legion. He's a geth. Don't worry about it. It's fine. We shoot this thing and then head back out to the ship with the IFF. It was right here the whole time, you guys. We didn't have to go through any of that. The Quickly IFF run to the elevator before Edie Shepherd. can launch the suicide mission. Shuttle no, no, we're not doing that yet, Edie. For Legion's loyalty mission, he asks you to brainwash an entire species. What the fuck? This is what every mission should have been. Forget daddy issues. I just reprogrammed an entire race of homicidal robots in like 10 minutes. It wasn't even that hard. And then Edie's like, uh, Shepard, there's a problem with the space motor. Uh, so go take the shuttle to your next mission. But they don't tell you what the next mission is. It doesn't even exist. This is what you should be fixing in the Legendary Edition Bioware, not my awesome car. While the entire team is chilling out in the shuttle, the Collectors attack the ship, and there's only one man who can save us. Oh dear god, he handles worse than the car. Edie, save the ship. Saving ship to Shepard's shopping list. No, Edie, it's Jeff. Save the ship, playing Jefferson's Starship on Spotify. Apparently the Collectors hate psychedelic rock as much as the rest of us in abandoned ship, but not before abducting the entire crew. Shepard is pretty peeved that the Collectors abducted his personal assistant because that means there was no one to look after his fish. And now it's time for the end game, the suicide mission. And this is when the Collectors go, why am I hearing boss music? If you are too poor to upgrade your ship, your team dies. If you don't love your squad mates enough, they die. But if you actually played the game, they're all fine. Yes, this whole game is just grinding until you go on a single mission. So they better make that mission damn good. Did they? Absolutely. Two out of 10, should have had more wrecks, what can I tell you? The collectors are putting up their spooky Halloween decorations, but it's November 1st, so it's time to take it down. Apparently they were using the abducted humans to create their own Reaper. Then we blow up the base for the sake of consistency. Shepard, you blew up a base with a bunch of cool skeletons in it, why? I don't owe you an explanation. You forget, Shepard, I own your medical debt. You do owe me. No, I don't owe you anything, because guess what? Bioware is based in Canada, which makes me a Canadian permanent resident, and I just got cleared for my health insurance card. All my medical expenses are covered, motherfucker. No! Bankrupt in six months. Mass Effect 2 has three DLCs that you had to buy with Bioware nonsense points, and two good ones. Layer of the Shadow Broker, where you had to help Liara remember that life is about more than just business. It's about finding a man you can support and attach your identity to. Basically, it's a Hallmark movie. Then you have Mass Effect Sheep Eater. You are solid snakes sent to the jungle to track down a missing Soviet scientist. Well, to be fair, that's about half the story. The actual story is... The Reaper invasion is happening on Tuesday, and you have a long weekend to figure out how to stop it. The scientist says she can stop it and tells us how. She's gonna throw a big rock at a mass relay, blow it up, and wipe out an entire star system. Thank God I did not put this off. Any more than I already did. Then she reveals that she was indoctrinated and she wants the Reapers to invade now. Why did you tell us how to throw the rocket thing? We do that and it explodes and 300,000 Batarians die. But because they're not human or sexy, nobody cares. This is a great victory. And that's when you find out that Harbinger and Shepard are the same person. Are you ready for this critic bomb internet? I mean grandkids. I think Mass Effect 2 is the weakest game in the series. It's a good game, I just like it the least. And I have scientific proof. And before you say it, no, that one doesn't exist.
Now it's time for Mass Effect, oh god, we have to write an ending. Bioware devs on Suicide Watch. Mass Effect 3 was released in 2012. You know what that means. Snap zooms. So many snap zooms. Holy crap, it's a lot of snap zooms. Anytime someone says anything, it's a fucking snap zoom. When Bioware was developing Mass Effect 3, they had to find a way to bring the game into the next generation of gaming. It was time to make some upgrades. Everything is bigger. The explosions are bigger. The muscles are bigger. The boobs are Jesus. You know those are synthetic. The question on everyone's mind at Bioware at the time was, how do we make 2012 gamer bros love our game? And then a game developer, who was definitely a woman, said, you know, we have some female characters in the game. What if they all had D cups? And here's how they're seeing women. They're seeing them as these, as these objects of desire, as these, you know, hot bodies. This game came out five years after the first one. Why do half the models look so much worse? Careful, Commander. You keep feeding me like this and I'll follow you home. Grandpa, you know, we're just hearing the story audibly. We don't have a visual reference for your complaints. Count yourself lucky, kid. I mean, look what they did to Ashley Williams. Oh my God, what's wrong with your face? Shepard has been in Alliance jail for helping space terrorists and also for blowing up that solar system and killing over 300,000 people. SS officer's defense for killing hundreds of thousands of people is that they were following orders. Shepard's defense is that he was following his heart. The admirals love it, but that's not why they're here. Would this be a good time to point out that Anderson has gotten promoted to admiral and I've saved the galaxy twice but haven't gotten promoted past commander? It's outrageous. It's unfair. Anderson didn't commit genocide or join a terrorist organization or die. Apparently any one of those can really derail your career. Uh, Shepard, do you remember those ancient aliens you were talking about? Uh, you know, the ones that you said wanted to wipe out all life in the galaxy? The ones that we were adamant didn't exist? Uh, yeah, kinda hard to forget about that. Uh, what exactly did they look like? Uh, like giant metal cuttlefish? I see. Is that them? <laughs> Shepard and Anderson escape. Shepard tries to save, uh, it's not important. The Reapers start landing on Earth, blasting tons of base and shattering every window on the planet. So the Reapers are giant mechanical marine life, but they send down a bunch of hissy monsters for Shepard to shoot. I feel like these guys themselves are really all you need. Like these guys you can shoot with like a regular rifle, but what are you gonna do when that thing charges you? Admiral Anderson decides to stay behind and coordinate the resistance. Fucking what resistance, David? Yeah, you and your band of merry men are gonna take down a giant space crab. Oh, the kid is about to escape. Should have come with me, kid. That'll learn him. Back on the Normandy, the Alliance is running conduits fucking everywhere because the first people the Reapers killed when they attacked Earth were all the ADA compliance inspectors. And you can't go into the women's bathroom like you could in Mass Effect 2. Overall, it's an unquestionable downgrade. Now we have to deal with another squad mate named James Vega. This guy blasts his deltoids like NATO blasted through Yugoslavia. Shepard, Ashley, and Jersey Shore go to Mars where they find Cerberus is attacking the old Prothean dig site. The aura is also there for some reason. We find blueprints for the ancient Prothean device called the Crucible. It could do anything from stopping the Reapers to opening someone's garage door. We have absolutely no idea. So naturally Shepard decides to go all in on Crucibles. Ashley gets curb stomped by this strangely sexy robot and Muscle Brain James decides he wants to smash. But for real, those are some horny robotics engineers over at Cerberus. Ashley dies. Hooray! Oh no, don't bring her. We go to the Citadel to ask the Council to send their fleet to save Earth. Udina is on board, but the rest of the Council decide to just turtle the rest of the game. But just because they're too lazy to do anything doesn't mean they're gonna stop bugging me to do things for them. Udina is now Earth's Counselor, despite my best efforts. Marvel as this veteran diplomat is still terrible at his job. A war council is being called, and Shepard, with his elite mailman training, is asked to deliver the leaders of the council species. But before we leave, we go to meet Ashley at the hospital. I had to see this shit for myself. You got skull crushed by a robot. You should absolutely be dead. The Turian counselor asks us to go save their president, but when we get to Palavin, the whole planet is on fire, so we're like 800 levels down the line of secession at this point. Uh, you. Ah uh, yeah, you look like you're in charge. The new Turian leader says he'll only help Earth if Shepard can get the Krogan to help the Turians. Why not just get the Krogan to help Earth? I mean, why not cut out the middleman? I uh, don't worry about that. Before you do that, go to Eden Prime and find a cryopod with a sole survivor who is in a secret underground bunker to wait out the apocalypse. Wait, we've already done Fallout 4. Inside the cryopod is Javik, uh, some sort of Prothean comedian, I believe. I am the anger of a dead people. Demanding blood be spilled for the blood we lost. <laughs> the council decides to make Ashley Williams a specter because they were just so impressed by how she keeps getting her ass kicked. After placing a puppet in charge of the Turians, we go get the Krogan because this problem can only be solved with big lizards. The Asari say they won't come to the war council because we invited the Krogan. What part of wipe out all life in the galaxy do you not understand? Rex says he'll only help if you cure the genophage. 
Rex, curing the genophage will take like thousands of scientists and decades of research and testing. No, fuck all that science shit, because there's a Solarian base where Morden's already discovered a cure. Took him half an hour. It just works. We go to the base and free a Krogan female who's immune to the genophage. But then Cerberus attacks with like six carloads of people. Completely overwhelms this highly secure military installation. We escape and take the female Krogan and Morden back to the ship. The genophage took 100 years to create, but 10 minutes to cure. Okay, but we're gonna have to find a safe way to test and distribute it amongst the population. And we need to run information campaigns so people will actually get vaccinated, because apparently that's a problem now. Nah, fuck it. Just spray that shit in the air. I'm sure it'll work out. Uh, what's the dosage? Fuck you, that's the dosage, buddy. Before you go down to Tachanka, you get a call from the Solarian leader. Please don't cure the genophage. If you sabotage the cure, we'll give you all our armies and scientists. Lady. I just watched your super secure base get pile-drived by 50 space terrorists. I'm not gonna take that over an army of dinosaurs. To get to the aerosol facility, we need to get past a reaper. The only way to fight a monster is with a bigger monster. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for the most awesome part of any media ever? And I cut it because I don't want you to think we're friends. If I had a dollar for every time I cured a disease with Morden by spraying an untested chemical into the atmosphere, I'd have two dollars. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. Morden explodes. No! Hooray, the genophage is cured. Now the Krogan can have babies again. How many kids does a Krogan typically have? Have anyway. Between one and two thousand. Ah, shit. The Quarians have the largest fleet in the galaxy, and Shepard has saved them so many times. Let's go mooch off them. Apparently, the Quarians are about to throw their entire armada at the Geth in an ultimately futile bid to get their homeworld back. They won't help Shepard fight the Reapers until they win this other war. They want to start at the least convenient time possible for all involved. All life in the Galaxy. You do some wet work for the Corians because they just keep getting their asses kicked and straight up cannot take the hint that they've bit off more than they can chew. Eventually meet Legion. He's just hanging out. You learn the Geth are being controlled by the Reapers to keep the galaxy fragmented. So you go to shoot it. Now you have to paint the Reaper with a laser so Joker can shoot it from space, but it tries to kill you, so move three feet to the left. I have no idea how these things ever wiped out all life in the galaxy before. Joker has killed two Reapers. Shepard has killed zero. That's all I'm saying. And you might say Mass Effect 2, but that was an embryo. So basically Shepard just performed a Reaper abortion. Legion dies, giving the Geth the intelligence to beat the Corians, and Shepard tells the Corians to fuck around and find out. Peace in our time. We get a call from the Solarian Counselor, asking us to come back to the Citadel to conspire against Udina. Fucking finally. When we get to the Citadel, everything is shot to crap. There's an angry man yelling at us. And now there's only one man who can save us. It's joking time. We shoot our way to the Solarian Counselor, and this guy with a sword comes out and tries to stab him. I'm, I'm sorry, did I miss something? I, I literally have no idea who this is. But Thane comes out of nowhere and kicks his ass. He basically got beaten up by a terminal asthma patient, so why can't Shepard finish him off? Cerberus believed the war was rigged against them, and they stormed the space capital. Unfortunately, lawmakers were rushed away by Ashley. Now, I have a confession to make. I know I'm a licensed video game master, but I should disclose that despite playing literally thousands of hours of Mass Effect, I always mess this part up and can never seem to kill Ashley. I know I make all the Paragon decisions. I don't know why it doesn't work. Udina was in on it. Wow, the only person who could have seen this coming was everyone in the universe. Ashley gets over her human supremacism and shoots Udina in the face. Finally, Bioware, a satisfying character arc. Anderson calls us. Hey Shepard, I just remembered I have an apartment of the Citadel you can stay at and like throw wild parties and whatnot. Sir, you're giving me your apartment? Well, the land values have tanked since the Cerberus attack, so I'm really unloading my property taxes on you. Anderson thought to himself before he said, yeah, Shepard, I guess I'm just a generous guy. Mass Effect 3 has one good DLC, and in that, Anderson gives you his luxury condo on the Citadel. By our standards today, this is sleek and modern, but Shepard is from 150 years in the future, so for him it's like walking into a room that looks like this. Enjoy all the modern amenities of 23rd century living. Read all the interviews from your boss's biography just scattered around this otherwise immaculate apartment. Keep logs next to your gas fireplace like a dick. Watch your employees take a bath. Do 200 pull-ups. Like, actually 200. I'm gonna fucking kill you, piece of shit, James. Hey, Liara, remember that time I killed your mom right in front of you? Let's hook up. Go for a relaxing dinner date with Joker. Commander! Ah, shit, here we go again. Sorry. A mercenary group shows up out of nowhere with 3,000 people whose sole drive it is to kill Shepard. But it makes sense. Mercenary groups are well known for their strict code of honor and ideological loyalty. I have no idea how this company turns a profit. My guess is that it's a massive insurance fraud scam where all the employees sign over their life insurance to the company right before Shepard kills them.
You wake up trapped in the bowels of the Citadel. Everything is shot to shit. Another woman is yelling at you. So far a normal Saturday evening. This time the woman is named Brooks. Then Liara shows up to help. Then just when you thought Mass Effect 3 was gonna suck monkey balls. Those sons of bitches. They put him in the game. They put Rex in the game. How did they get the rights to Rex? We go to a casino to try to figure out who's behind all this. Brooks goes to find the only man with the answers. Oh no, he's coincidentally dead. Obvious suicide, nothing suspicious about this at all. With her superior shadow broker intel, Liara Googles a walkthrough to find some answers. It turns out that Shepard is the victim of a serious crime, identity theft. And whoever's doing it is in the Citadel archives right now. And then some cheeky motherfucker wrote this. What's with the Volus? Oh, pizza delivery guy. I got the munchies. Double pepperoni. It's hilarious because the pizza delivery guy didn't ring the doorbell before coming into my apartment. If this was Texas, I could legally shoot him dead, no questions asked. We raid the archives to find out who's setting us up, and that's when you learn the guy trying to kill you. And you are the same person. I'm Commander Shepard. And this is my favorite store on the Citadel. We chase Clone Shepard through the archives until we learn the second big twist. Brooks was working for him the entire time. I can't believe you betrayed me after all we've been through together. Oh wait, yes I can. Evil Shepard traps real Shepard in the archives and goes to steal the Normandy so he can take over. I'm not sure what his long-term goal is. I don't think he's very good at planning ahead. We go to the Normandy and shoot everyone. Evil Shepard falls out the back. Shepard tries to save him, but the guy literally asks, then what? He actually cannot plan ahead. Shepard arrests Brooks and everything goes back to normal. Later, you throw a party to celebrate not dying. James makes eggs and nobody's neck works right. The end. Wow, that was a fun, lighthearted comedy romp, right? Well, now it's back to more crimes, 3D. Shepard keeps having these incredibly annoying dreams about that dumb kid. I think these were supposed to be an homage to the unicorn dreams from Blade Runner. Apparently Bioware forgot that when you do an homage to something, you're not supposed to pick the shittiest part. We get a call from Admiral Hackett, who is an important character I forgot to mention. He tells us that the Crucible is finished, but we're missing something called the Catalyst. Fucking Crucible Catalyst? What's with the mystery man bullshit? What the fuck is the Catalyst? What even is the Crucible for that matter? Why is every other part of these construction documents completely legible to us, except for the fucking name? We just built a giant $5 trillion Crucible, and now you're telling me we don't even have the whole set of plans. Or, if you select the Paragon dialogue option. Don't worry, Admiral. I'm sure we'll figure this out. The Asari Counselor asks us to go save her homeworld of Thessia because she is a gigantic hypocrite. When we get there, we discover the Asari had a Prothean beacon all along and basically knew about the Reapers forever. Again, gigantic hypocrite. Inside the monument is another Prothean Alexa that tells us it knows about the Catalyst. Why was this information not with the actual plans for the Crucible? I think this whole thing was just a practical joke by the Protheans. Then we get attacked by... Um, I... I still don't know who this is. We defeat him, but he has a helicopter that shoots missiles, and apparently this temple was built on top of a bottomless chasm. He escapes with the data on the Catalyst, but then Shepard's secretary is like, Yeah, I saw where that bloke went. Isn't it? <laughs> Fuck me. We travel to the magical world of refugee resettlement camps. Oh no, it turns out it's a complete nightmare run by Miranda's crazy father. What, 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 what am I seeing here? Th those are the refugees. The Reapers, what, what are they doing? They're killing them. Miranda shows up out of nowhere Damn. and throws him through the window. I think that's barely a two-story drop. He's probably still alive. But finally, after chasing endless leads, we finally find the end of the endless leads. What? You know what? It's staying in. I'm tired. It's like 2 a.m. I have work tomorrow. It's staying in. Miranda tells us where to find the elusive man's secret giant space station. You know, Miranda, this would have been really fucking useful information the last time I talked to you like a week ago. It's time to take the fight to the real enemy. Ethno-nationalists. So Shepard blows up the elusive man's luxury apartment. That was for tacos. You son of a bitch. But while you were away, the Reapers took over the Citadel and brought it to Earth. But they didn't just take the Citadel, they took my rent control department. And I will literally throw the entire weight of the galaxy's military against them to get it back. Snap zoom. Fight your way through the streets of post Brexit London and take this random blue sky beam to the Citadel. You meet Anderson up there, but you have bad trigger discipline, so you accidentally shoot him. The elusive man shows up. My man's looking rough. I don't know how either of them got here. If I had a dollar every time I convinced a main villain to shoot themselves, I'd have two dollars. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. That's it. The crucible is docked. Nothing's happening. The crucible's not firing. <sighs> Ugh. 
Then you float up to the top where you meet that dumbass little kid. Now he's a ghost because he was too fucking stupid to save himself when he had the chance. He tries to explain everything, but Shepard has been exploded like 50 times, so he's basically deaf at this point. My name is Shepard Shepard, and I had a dream. To help my boss deliver some mail. But now I have a new dream. To go back to my luxury apartment. But you took that away from me. So now I'm gonna deliver my foot straight up your ass! There are several possible endings for Mass Effect. The control ending where Shepard takes over the Reapers and you get a blue color filter. The synthesis ending where you combine the DNA of all people and machines so they'll understand each other, which I guess means that the moral of the story is that for people to have empathy for each other, they need to be exactly the same, which is pretty shitty. And the destroy ending where Shepard shoots a thing and you get a red thing, and then he survives. People have said the ending of Mass Effect is anticlimactic, uh, but that's because they didn't get the real ending. To get the real ending, the first thing you need to do is save both Caden and Ashley in Mass Effect 1. Thanks, Commander. Things got pretty hot down there. You saved my life. Both our lives. I don't know how you did it, Commander. But you also have to make one critical decision in Mass Effect 2. Morden, forget curing the genophage. You should just build a time machine and stop it from happening in the first place. Damn it, Shepard. To do that, I would need a machine capable of withstanding a tremendous amount of force. Miranda, if you can rebuild me from basically a damp rag, can you rebuild my car? You got a mite? Oh, I crikey. If you do that, you'll get the real ending. Caden? Doc Morton? Shepard, you've got to come back with me. Where? Back to the future. Wait a minute, Doc. What happens to us in the future? What, do we become assholes or something? No, 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 Shepard. Both you and Leo turn out fine. It's your kids, Shepard. Something's got to be done about your kids. Hey, Doc Morton, you better back up. We don't have enough roadmap to play in the next game. Roadmaps? Where we're going, we don't need development roadmaps. And there were never any stories in the Mass Effect universe ever again. Is that really how it ended, Grandpa Beak? Yes. Wow. Yep, that's the end of Mass Effect. There's absolutely no more. It's 4 a.m., so I'm gonna go to bed. Ah, but Grandpa, what about this one? I'm sorry, did I fucking stutter? Now good night, sleep tight, don't let the radioactive spider scorpions we have in the future bite. Grandpa, do you think you could come read to us again tomorrow night? No. <laughs>So as you know, I'm not the kind of YouTuber that's gonna tell you all to smash that like button and ring the bell or whatever, but this shit was a lot of work. You guys have no idea. I 3D modeled a set for this and then drew over it. I have a thousand images of toucans now. I thought I was gonna finish this video five months ago. What a fool I was. So you motherfuckers better like this video Leave a goddamned comment, and for fuck's sakes, if you are not subscribed at this point, I will literally come to your house, break into your room at night, tie you down, and read you the novelization of Mass Effect Andromeda. I swear to fucking god I'll do it. Oh, let's see what else. Follow me on Twitter for some semi-regular updates and even less regular jokes. I have Instagram. I don't know what my handle is. I'll also have a subreddit, r slash Entertainment. Uh, eventually, because I was bored one day and I took the name, but I haven't set anything up. I have a Twitch, but I've only ever live streamed on YouTube, so that's basically a practical joke. Wait, is that the room from Twin Peaks? Is Shepard trapped in the Black Lodge? Non why mass effect and your midnight. Wow, did all that really happen? Fuck if I know, kid. That shit was like months ago. Wow. Can you tell me another story about the Shepherd Shepherd? Fuck off. I'm not here to entertain you. Please. Look, kid, you gotta stop following me home. The cops are gonna come break down my door one day looking for you.